Hello everyone, I'm Tim Hawk and I'm a candidate for AIA 2025 president. Over the past week, I've heard a lot of buzz on social media from architects around the country centered on the topic of compensation. It's pretty obvious one of the most pressing issues facing many of our members is prosperity. I teach a professional practice class at Ohio State's Knowlton School. And I can't tell you the number of students who've approached me after class to talk about compensation packages. This generation of emerging talent is really smart. I think they're dedicated to the practice and they're willing to work hard, but they really just want to be compensated well. To me, this issue can only really be addressed through changing our relationship to the patrons. We've been responding to requests to deliver a permit, and really a permit only, for far too long. And it's been at great cost to the profession. You and I both know that when a client asks us to limit our professional presence during construction administration, that we're always gonna end up working to interpret the drawings or provide some kind of resolution to a field conflict without any kind of compensation. So a few years ago at my firm, we began to work on changing the way that we interact with patrons of architecture, our clients, to drive greater profitability at our firm. So with that profitability, we can invest in our staff with higher compensation and provide better, better benefit plans. We feel we're doing our part to change the dialogue and I work on this every day, and I plan to bring this knowledge to the table as president of the AIA. Look, if we can't increase the potential for prosperity in the profession, our efforts to build a diverse pipeline are futile. Architects of all stripes want to be fairly compensated, and they wanna earn a wage that's commiserate with the investment that they've made. Here are a few things that I've learned over the years. First, we shifted away from engaging on projects, but instead we engage in an agreement with a client. We are account-based. The client is the focus. This allows us to diversify the type of work that we do with our clients and allows us to help build trust and loyalty Generally, we're providing services now over a period of years instead of on a case-by-case -case or a project basis. Secondly, we had to figure out what we're good at and what we're not necessarily our strong suit. If you can show a pattern of success in a particular area, clients actually see value. And the project is no longer about a fee, but instead there's a stronger focus on how we provide results. The discussion becomes about value. Additionally, we partner more and we realize that we can offer targeted services with a wide range of groups instead of always having to do it all and to be the architect who designs and details and delivers. Others, other partners see greater value in what we do well and they're willing to pay for it and they'll add us to the team. It's impossible for any architect to predict the level of service that is necessary for a project on day one of the negotiation. At WSA, we always begin a project with a study. So we provide a, a phase of work that helps us determine the criteria and we bring more depth and a fuller understanding of the level of service that's really required to complete the project. We match the project scope to the exact services that we need to provide. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less than what might have been anticipated. After that, we use a three-part agreement. We seek compensation for the pre-design and programming phase, the study. Then we enter into a follow-up agreement to prepare the implementation documents and then we sit down a third time before construction starts. Here we'll finalize the agreement for our specific support mechanism during construction. 
We have found out that almost every client that we use this process with, it will be revealed that they need us for a greater level of engagement throughout the project than we had anticipated. And our construction administration scope is often at a higher level than we would have initially requested. Additionally, we've begun to more clearly articulate what we do and what we can also do. And our scope has expanded. Most clients want to have a comprehensive solution and they want to reduce the risk for change during construction. So now we offer master planning services and management of furniture programs, environmental communications, we offer interior design services independently, and we offer facility support services. And these are all in addition to the traditional architectural services that we've offered for years. As a result, over the past few years, using these tactics, our firm has more than quadrupled our sales values. Salaries are at levels that have increased 10 to 15% in that same period. And we have more opportunities. It's easier to find work. Now, everything is not perfect, of course, uh, but I, for one, feel a sense of satisfaction knowing that our team is prospering a bit better than they were before. And lastly, here's the most important thing that I've learned. To be successful, you have to fill a need that exists. Look, if I'm passionate about the design of, let's say, um, uh, Evangelical Lutheran churches, and I have tons of experience in this area, but these projects do not exist, frankly, my experience and my passion just don't matter. Conversely, if I know there's a need to adapt office complexes to help organizations address the demands of, let's say, a post-pandemic workforce, and I have experience and passion in this lane as well, this is where I'll prosper. In the end, we really are solving societal problems. I wanted to talk on this topic since I believe it is really part and parcel of why I want to serve the AIA as its 2025 president. The AIA should be helping architects increase their value and through that become more prosperous. This in turn will attract more diversity to the profession and will help us all with retention. Let's do this together.